Good morning and praise the Lord. We want to thank you and welcome you here to Good News Christian Center Church where Jesus is Lord. And do remember, we're here on Wednesday for our weekday Bible study. So we'd like to invite you to like, share, do what it takes to help get the word out. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started with prayer. Father, we just thank you again for another day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for how you kept us, how you watched over us, Lord God, and carried us, Lord God, and brought us into this place once again to worship you, to call upon your name, Lord God, because you're not just our source, you're our only source. Now I pray, Father, that as the word come forth, it shall pierce the heart of the hearer, and they shall be transformed into doers. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking on the topic, he remembered me. And in this topic, it's it's... We want God to remember us for the right things. And so for the last few weeks, we've been two scriptures we've been dwelling on. And the reason I've been dwelling on them to get it really in our spirit that this we're going to have to be careful what we say. Because it's so easy to say what you see, even though it's not what you want. We, it's so easy to say what you see. So we want to be in that place where we're saying the right thing because God's going to do just what we say. Somebody say amen to that. Let us open up and we're going to go quicker through these because we've been through them a number of times, but I want to keep them close to your heart. And, you know, even in the book of James, it said be slow to speak and quick to hear. Sometimes people just kind of blabble off, I guess, based on whatever they see they might need or what have you. But you want to be in that place where you are speaking. Somebody said the word of God. God. That's where you want to be. You want to be in that place where you're speaking the word of God. So go to Deuteronomy chapter seven. This is all to keep you in remembrance because, see, things will come. Notice uh, when the teacher finished teaching, what does he do? The test. the test will come. So I'm saying to you to watch closely, listen carefully, watch closely and listen carefully. Uh, when I was in Bible school, we had a class called Effective Listening. And that class really kind of connected me to a lot of things I would have missed. Because, see, sometimes people hear, but they don't listen. I said they hear, but they don't listen. When you listen, it comes out of the heart. And that's what you have to listen to because you really want to get that thing rooted and grounded in you. Lots of time things happen. You know, I, I notice uh, things happen and, 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 and the doctor may diagnose you with something. Well, when this happened, you don't have to repeat what he said. You heard it. You don't have to. You heard what he said. Now, that is actually facts. But the truth is, what did God say? And see, sometimes people so much want to rehearse the facts. Uh-uh, it's the truth. What did God say? I understand what reality is, but the truth, the word of God will change anything. But people so want to rely on what the doctor said happened to them. We got that. Okay, we, we got that. Let's move on. How are we going to work on this? How are we going to change this thing? And it's all about what you say. If you continue to say it, come on, you're going to have it. Yeah. It'll be with you. Yeah. You're going to have to, as I said, when I uh, had a back injury uh, 34 years ago and they told me I'd never work again, construction, and um, my pastor told me you got to speak that thing out of your back. If I, was, I was out maybe about 11 months and been back at it ever since. I'm telling you, I had to not say what I felt because there were some times I was, remember we was living in Juliet at the time and I was sitting in the living room in the big chair. And I was sitting there and I reached forward. You know how you grab thumbs to get up? I reached forward to get up and a pain hit me in my back and I hollered loud, oh! My wife came through, she said, what's wrong? I said, I'm healed. Now watch this, when I said that, I felt just as silly as silly could be. The devil said, now why would you say that? Because that's what I want. I don't want what I feel. I want my healing to manifest. Yes. So regardless of what I feel and how it feels, I got to say what I want. Should I agree with the pain? It's there. Yes, it's there, but it don't make me agree with it. You don't live here. You don't pay rent here. So why should I welcome you to stay? So I said what I wanted. I'm healed. I'm healed. And I'm going to tell you something. That broke something in me, which I would say probably was a pride to speak truth over facts that broke something in me and I never had a problem since with that. See, I remember when we purchased our first building and uh, we had told everybody that we was gonna close. 
and come to the week of closing, you know, Sunday, then Monday to next Sunday, you ready to really, you know, sometimes in this gospel, we don't shout till we see it happen. And uh, we hadn't shouted, <laughs> but we had believed that it had happened. And come all the course of the week, we was closing that Thursday, all the course of the week, we did not have the money they requested, but God told me to go to the closing. And as we went forth, the closer you get to the week, the devil was talking and he was talking loud, didn't look like I could shut him up. He was telling me, now you silly fool, you done told them folks you're gonna close, how you gonna close, you don't even have the money, but that was the facts. God told me to go to the closing. See, you're going to have to override the facts for the truth. God told me we was going to close. Yes, yes. See, it reminds me, and I, I really adopted that. I had been down, we had been in, in, in Fort Worth, Texas to a conference that week. And uh, Dr. Oral Roberts had taught a message about this guy. I'll never forget this, this uh, a testimony by a guy named uh, Willie Phelps. And he was out of some parts of West Virginia, somewhere out that way. And this guy had polio. And, and it has caused his leg to shrink four inches shorter than the other one. And he came to the meeting five nights to get in the meeting, and the meeting was so full, he could not get in for five nights. And on the fifth night, he didn't go to the heat. When he got there, he saw the same thing, so he went around the back, because Dr. Robbins would have a little small tent out back, which was considered his office. And so he said a guy, when he came out of the meeting, the guy was sitting in his office. He didn't know he didn't got past security and everybody. That's faith. That's faith. I can tell you something about security. In there. However, he had gotten in Dr. Roberts office and as he had gotten there, Dr. Roberts walked in and he was kind of knocked off his feet because sometimes ministers watch themselves because they have been attacked. And he said when he saw the guy, he was surprised. He said, what, what are you doing here? He said, well, I am supposed to be healed tonight. Well, the healing wasn't going on in there. It was going on in the big tent. So he said, he told him, I don't know if I have the strength to heal you tonight. I, I ministered to 5,000 people. And the guy said, I don't know nothing about that. All I know, I'm supposed to be healed tonight. He said, well, I don't have the faith for it. The guy said, I don't know about that. All I know, I'm supposed to be healed. Yes. And he said, okay, come on, let me pray for you. He said he prayed for the guy. And the guy left out of there looking the same way he came. But a few days later, <clears throat> the guy got in touch with him and told him that he went home the same way and he told his mom and dad that he had been healed, but he was looking the same way. And as he looked the same way, he took his crutch and threw it across the kitchen to his dad and, and as he walked, the foot, the leg grew out. <laughs> See, and I grabbed a hold to that. See, your test, somebody else's testimony will work for you if you believe. Yes. The same anointing it takes to get finances is the same anointing it takes to heal. Yes. So when he did that, <clears throat> he called Dr. Robinson, told him, and he said, Dr. Robinson said, really? He said, yeah. He said he followed that healing for 34 years, and that guy was still healed. You, you got to come to the place where you believe. The guy kept saying, all I know, I'm supposed to be healed. Yeah. So when I heard that and I sat there and I meditated on that thing, came home from the meeting and was watching the TV, Christian TV, and there Dr. Roberts was sharing that same testimony with Benny Hinn. I said, man, it's got to be something going on here. I just left a live meeting, then I come home and see this on TV, and it clicked to me. All I know is I'm supposed to close. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, went to that, went to that, that, that brother Dave, the Wednesday, the guy called me. He said, we don't even have a, you don't even have a bank account with us. Can you open up an account? I told him, yes, sir. He said, we don't have your social security number or nothing, but we're going to close tomorrow. Watch this. Got to the meeting. He said, how much money you got? God said, don't give him all your money. I said, we got $5,000. He said, now they asked for 24. He said, but we're going to work with what you got. All I know is I supposed to close. I'm telling you, when you grab it and you speak the truth yeah. versus the facts, you'll win every time. Yes, yes. But most of the time, people are a little reluctant to say the truth against the facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the doctor told you what he saw, yes. but the word of God will change anything. Yes, I'm telling you, we got to get to this place where we don't say what we see. No. We say and speak the truth. Yes. The facts is what the doctor said. The truth is what God said. Yes. Who made you? The doctor or God? God. I'm going to say what the author yes. and the finisher of my faith has yes. said about me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, you got to come to this place where you got to get your mouth and line it up with the word of God, regardless of how it feels. If it make you holler, holler. Yes. 
If it make you dance, dance. Do what you got to do to get to where you're going. Because, see, I'm telling you, you look at this stuff and listen to it so long and don't act on it, it becomes immune to you. It becomes immune to your spirit. Your spirit gets lazy. It don't do it because you ain't never exercised it. The Bible said many who are led by the spirit of God, come on, they are the sons of God. You are led always into the truth and the truth will manifest for you if you act on it. Somebody say amen to that. So I'm, I'm constantly bringing this out because I want to nail this down. I want to nail it to the cross. So as you speak these things, you'll know they are capable of happening. Somebody said for me. For me. Go to what I said, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Amen. And we went over this a number of times and I want to make sure this is in you. 7 to 17. If thou shalt say in thine heart that these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? He's saying if you say they are bigger than him, he can't do nothing. Because of what you said. Because of what you, the Bible said there's life and death. Come on. And the power of the tongue. But what did you speak? Did you speak life or did you speak death? Yes, yes, Lord. And this is what you're going to have to do. Go over to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. <clears throat> and verse 28. He says, say unto them, as truly as I live, says the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, come on, so will I do to you. What you going to say? Because this is, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have to really take this thing. And I'm coming back across it because I'm seeing it not really being effective, but this has to be. Yes. For faith to work, this has to be in place. You're going to have to say what you want in regards to how I feel, how I look, or what the doctor said. Yes. You're going to have to say it anyway. You're going to have to say it anyway because the enemy don't want you to say it. He really don't. He don't want you to say it. Look over in Job chapter six. We went there last week as well, but look back again. Job chapter six. Are we all there? Verse 24, he said, teach me and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have what? Error. Teach me and I'll hold my tongue. Teach me and I'll hold my tongue. Help me to understand where I have error. Where's your error? With your tongue. Your error with your tongue. And seeing sometimes people don't get it. Well, that's what, that's what they said. I ain't concerned about they. I'm only concerned about what my master said, my maker, my creator. That's what I'm because that's what is that's where faith comes in. Who who's in Isaiah 12, I believe those 50 said, whose report? Yes. Will you believe? Yes. Think about it. Whose report will you believe? We just sang that song. I will believe the report of the Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 See, sometimes people think this is yes, it's hard to speak when you're feeling something else, but don't be moved. They're just a current that you're going against. I say it's just a current that you are going against. And so you don't have to be moved by that because see, the enemy wants you to be moved by what you feel. That's why he give you feelings. I said that's why he give you feelings. That's how we have to go to Isaiah chapter 53. In verse one, it says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has believed, who has believed our report and who has of the arm of the Lord revealed? I tell you who was revealed to him who believed his report. Him who believed his report. Do you believe what God said? Then it will be revealed to you. Reveal. Uh, Words come from the word Revelation. It will be manifest. It will be open unto you. And you're going to have to see it and believe it for yourself because the enemy don't want you to speak the truth. He don't ever want you to speak the truth. He wants you to say what you feel. Well, I just don't feel. Listen, don't get caught up in your emotions. You better control your emotions. Yes. You have a within experience, not an up on. You have the Holy Spirit within you. And the Bible said when the spirit of truth has come, he will teach you. Come on. All things. You can't be moved by a feeling. See, the devil can give you a feeling. Oh, yes, he can. 
The Bible said he even shake and tremble <laughs> at the presence of the Lord. But he'll make you tremble too if you believe in that. You're going to come to the place where you're going to have to go on what's within. See, when, when, when something come after me, I've learned, hey, just be calm. God's got you. You say, right? You feel with the Holy Spirit. God's got you. All you got to do is slow down. Be slow to speak and quick to hear. Because see, when the enemy comes, the Bible says, when the enemy comes in, and that scripture really, I ain't going over there, but that scripture should have been really, had a little hyphen or common or something. It says, when the enemy comes, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood. But here it should have been broken down. When the enemy comes in, pause. Okay, somebody say he came in. Amen. Now let's get on the other side. Like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Yes. Say he might have came in, but he ain't going through. Hallelujah. Say he might have came in, but he ain't going through. Because the spirit of the Lord has risen up a standard against him. Say so you can't touch this. He said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Listen, it might get in, but it will not prosper. God said he will restore. See, God is all about restoration. I don't care what happened. God is all about restoration. And we got to be in a place where we hear this and believe this and take it and put it to action. God will restore anything. Numbers 23, 19 said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Has he spoken and shall he not make it good? And watch this. The scripture goes on to say he hath blessed. Past it. He hath blessed. I mean, let me help you understand. He done it. <laughs> and then it goes on to say who can reverse it? Who can reverse it? Nobody can reverse it. It's already done. It's already done. So you got to get yourself into the place where you just simply believe. Trust God <clears throat> with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. You got to do this in all your ways. In all your ways, you got to acknowledge him. And I don't care if it's financial, sickness, it doesn't matter. Deliverance, you got to acknowledge him. He said he will and he can't lie. But we just got to come to this place where we trust him and we're going to have to say what God said in spite of what the doctor said. And you're going to have to stay on it because <clears throat> your chance will come and you, you're going to have to you're going to have to <laughs> you're going to have to say something. You listen, you're going to have to say it, pray it and go with it. It reminded me when Stella was in the hospital and all the stuff that I was hearing and, and so on and so forth. I said, it ain't time to cry. What are you going to cry for? It's, somebody says it's time to war. Yeah, that's what you're going to have. You want to fight now. You, you don't have to fight now, see, because it's on, it's on. somebody said it's on. <laughs> and when you hear that in the streets, you better duck, die, do whatever it takes. So I took it to the streets. I prayed and I left. I told my wife, let's go. She said, well, somebody need to go down to, uh, what they call it? ER with her. Well, I sent the word. Lord have mercy. I said, I sent the word. <laughs> I sent the word. Because that's what he said. He said he sent his word and did what? Healed them. So we need to go on to the house. She said, well, let's just go on anyway. So, you know, you just kind of brothers humble down sometimes. <laughs> and just go on anyway. And hey, I slept. I slept. Every night she was on that ventilator, I slept. I didn't wake up one night hollering out to the Lord because I had sent his word. And he healed them. And I just kept listening for a different report every time. I was not listening to hear the same thing. I was listening. As I went and I looked, I just wasn't moved by what I saw. Because what I saw didn't look good. If I had begun to speak in that, I would have been contradicting the word. I had to say what I had to say and move on. I can't harbor on this. I'm going to work. I ain't calling back how she's doing. I already know. I sent his word. Why? Because he sent his word to me. And he told me what it did. And I trusted him at that. I rested. I rested. I rested. And they begin to tell me what they're going to try without the ventilator. Okay, let them do what they got to do. She coming through. <laughs> let them do what they got to do in you. Somebody said, keep believing. keep believing. Don't back down. You're going to have to learn to trust God in an adverse situation. 
Yeah, you're going to have to learn to trust him. And as you trust him there, God is going to meet you at the point of your faith. I mean, I had a peace from the moment I prayed because where I got the Holy Ghost and that peace was within. I wasn't moved by what I would see, the tears that they would try to tell them, let's go. Let's get up out of here because it was time to go. You've done what you can do. Now trust God. Somebody said, cash your cares. I can't cash my cares and hold, hand, hold my hands on. I'm standing there and watch over it. I can't do it like that. I got to, he said, occupy. I got to keep going. He said, occupy until the healing come through. I said, occupy until the healing come through. And this is what you got to do. You got to just trust God, keep moving, and don't get hung up on that. The enemy wants you to get hung up on it. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you there worrying and crying about what you see. See, he breaking you down. No, uh-uh. What that song said, I cried my what? I ain't got no more for that. I may have something for something else, but I ain't got no more for that. I ain't cried my last tear for that. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. He said, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. See, and that's where you got to, that's the place you got to be, because see, the enemy don't want you to be there. He don't want you to be, he wants you to be out there in la-la land. What was we, in Isaiah, whose report, who has believed, whose report have you believed? In all your circumstances and situations, whose report have you believed? God never lost a battle. Somebody said he never lost a battle yet? Uh Uh-uh. Take the yet off of it. Wherever you got it from, take it back, get you a refund or whatever. (laughs) Credit, Uh, that don't work there. He never lost a battle. Never. So we're going to have to be in that place where God rules and that's in his word. Amen. Now, we we did Job chapter 6, right? Go, or go over to Matthew chapter 22. We went there last week too, but I just want to make sure that you got this thing within. Because see, pastor may not be there when, when something come up. Somebody say, I got the word. I got the word. But I do have a pastor. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to carry this. This is your weapon of warfare. Look at, I'm not going to read all this uh, I did last week. Go down to verse 29, Matthew 22, 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, ye do error, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. I could have went along with everything the doctor said, but instead I prayed. I prayed. I could have erred, but I prayed because I know the power of God. There's no word of God void of power. Let me say that again. There is no word of God void of power. I'm going to say it one more time. There is no word of God void of power. It carries it on. It carries its own. All you have to do, somebody says, speak it. Just say it. Just say it. That's all you got to do. Just say it. You don't have to get loud. You can speak it gentle. However you present it, just present it. Just make sure you present the word of God. I don't care. As I said, it doesn't matter if it's financing, healing or what. Because I'm going to tell you something. When I stood on that thing, all I know is we supposed to close. I ain't had no more closing problems. I ain't had no more pressure trying to close. I've been bold closing. You hear me? It it caused me to be bold because, see, I had been through that before. I mean, it's almost like people every, you know, when these bills come out every month, they hadn't managed their money well and, and they went, Lord, Lord, what are we going to do about this? And, and crying out, why, why are you doing that? Why? I mean, haven't he delivered you every time? So why not take it in that gentle? And say, Lord, teach me how to manage. <laughs> Let me say it again. Lord, teach me how to manage. So when this come up, because see, it's not a shortage. It's not lack. If it's a lack, it's a lack of managing money. It's no lack. You causes it to be lack by not managing it well. You can't have everything when you want it all the time. He said, he even said for you to come to me and to be mine, you have to first do what? Deny yourself. Can't have your way all the time. You have to first, even to be with him, he said you have to deny yourself first. So if he told you to deny yourself first, so you know there's going to be some denying and some things that you want. See, and sometimes people every month, the same set of bills. They're familiar. They can, get, they can call them off in order, alphabetically at that, because they know what's due. 
but they're not doing right about their finances. When God said, I will supply you every need he already has. You just got to manage well. That's all you have to do. And sometimes people, how you do this, how you do that, you, just, you manage well. You ought to be known. He said the first thing should be found in the steward. He should be found what? Faithful. Where is that at? In, what's that in 1 Corinthians 15? Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's in Corinthians over here, some 15. Ah. It's in here. Last time I seen it in here. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter four. Thank you, preacher. And verse two. <laughs> That's what the preacher told me now. First Corinthians chapter four and verse two. Let's start at verse one. He said, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God, which means servants, it's mysteries of hidden things. Moreover, it is required in stewards. Are you a steward? Yes. That a man be found what? Faithful. Faithful, yes. Faithful over what? Whatever God has given you. Yes. Yes. Whatever God has given you, you should be found faithful. And if you found faithful, he said, I won't even go into all that. I'm just quote. He said, if you be faithful over a few things, come on. He'll make you rulers over much. Yes. Some about to run it. <laughs> ah. Listen, you, you, you got to work. See, it sounds simple, but if you do the simple things, the major things will manifest. Mm -hmm. You should be faithful over a little. I'll make you rulers over much. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's your car. Keep it clean. If it's your closet, keep it clean. Unless you're a woman one. The word works, saints. Amen. And we got to put ourselves in this place where we trust God even more. Because, see, I'm telling you, it's getting critical out here. It's getting critical. It, 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 it's so critical. They don't know who, you, who they want to direct the country. And I ain't trying to go political on you, but I am. It's all shook up, saints. It's all shook up. Folks don't know what they do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep trusting my God. Because I don't care who they put in there. God's going to still take care of his own. And some come up and it was that Luke 18 and 18, Luke 18 and 1. It said God know how to avenge his own. I'm going to stay before him. I said, I'm, let's go over there. I said, be this Luke chapter 18. Yeah, yeah, this is where this, this, this poor widow they called her. Luke 18, <clears throat> chapter 18 and verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them in this end, to this end, that men ought to always pray, come on, and not to faint. See, and that's why you got to continue to pray. I don't care what happens out there, who they vote for or how they vote for. You got to continue to pray. Yes. Say, I got to go for myself. <laughs> Verse two, saying there is there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regard man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. She was saying, help me against my adversary. She was crying out for help. And he would not for a while. You get that? He would not. Come on. For a while. So somebody said this thing's subject to change. <laughs> so it might look like it ain't changing, but you, you, you just stay right there. Let me read that again. I like that. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. He couldn't continue to hold out on him. Notice what it said. But. See, when you see that word, but it negates everything that was spoken before. Somebody said, but. but. Okay, it's about to be negated. <laughs> he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. That's what faith do to people. You just keep on believing. They keep telling you no. You just keep on going back. Don't stop going. See, you can't stop in faith. You got to be persistent. Inconsistency lies the power. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. She was saying, I'm going to get justice. That's what she was saying. And the, verse six, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall, and shall not God avenge? Come on. 
His own elect. Are you God's elect? Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that, that he will avenge them. Come on. Somebody says on his way. You better get back because the blessing is about to knock you down. <laughs> it's about to knock that situation out of your life forever. I will tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Now notice what Jesus is looking for when he come back here. Faith. He ain't looking for all this, 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 this dress code. And, and I mean, there is a way to dress, but I'm just saying he ain't coming here checking on that. Check and see how long your skirt is. And, and uh, he, ain't, he ain't coming looking for that. He coming looking for faith, man. So when he come, will there be faith on the earth? And this lady crying out to Jesus for justice, not the president, not the judge. It says she cries out to him night and day, but she constantly went to him. Because when she, see, listen, let me tell you something. When you spend time in the presence of God, whoever you spend your time with, they are partaking of that because his presence is still up on you. So when she was praying night and day and she went to the judge, it wasn't her he couldn't resist. It was his presence. Because you carries it. That's how people can say something about them. See, because when you spend time, I'm going to say it again, when you spend time in the presence of God, when you leave their presence, somebody says it's on me. Ah, it's on you. And wherever you go, it's sense because we carry him inside. And whenever he need us or before we know we need him, he's already come out. And somebody said the answer is changing. The answer is changing. You got to trust God, saints, with all of your heart. You got to say the right thing to see this word work for you. You can't be saying this and saying that and your spirit is confused. You're going to have to stand firm. You're going to have to stand firm. This is the will of God for you. I said this is the will of God for you. You're going to have to stand firm and see the enemy wants you always caving in and, and giving in. But you don't have to. You don't have to go to Second Corinthians chapter four. My goodness. Glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter four. And verse 13. And it reads. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore come on, speak. You got to know that as you speak it, God hears you. And he's going to do just what he said. He is. See, the thing is, the enemy always throw, throw in other interests, something else that you may be interested in. And this thing is always connected to the flesh. It's never spiritually. See, and when the enemy does this, he know it gets your attention because he know what, how you live living. you're living by the flesh. And he easy to throw those things in there to see the devil know just what to send before you to distract you. See, because somewhere your eyes have seen, your ears have heard. And these things attract you. So he send those things to distract you. He sent them right back at you. You're going to be in the place where you're going to stay in the will of God. The Bible said, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hey, thoughts come to me too, but I have to control those thoughts. I can't allow those thoughts to become words and fall into my heart and begin to produce. I've got to put myself in that place where I'm constantly trusting God, casting down every thought and every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's what keeps me. That's what keeps me, because I don't let thoughts come in to change my mind. You know, I don't, uh, I don't know, yeah, I, I, I know the scripture, uh, but I'm trying to call reference right now. Uh, it says, meddle not with those who are given to change. Meddle not with those who are given to change. You hang around wishy-washy people, you're going to become wishy-washy. The Bible says, follow those who through faith and patience, somebody say I'm waiting patiently, have inherited the promise of God. 
Follow those who have. And that's what he's telling you to do. So that's my crowd. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. You got to put yourself in that place where you trust him at all times, through all things. I don't care what arise. Spirit of the Lord, I raise up a standard against him. But he said, meddle not with those who are given to change. See, you're going to have to be standing with some folks that's going on. I, I've seen some people with some things where he said, well, uh, I've seen folks start church. And well, it just wasn't working. No, you, 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 you kind of missing it. Let me, let, me, let me go over here to Isaiah for a minute. I believe I have. I'm going to take time whether I have it or not. Look at Isaiah chapter 66. Well, it, it just wasn't working, so I just kind of let it win. Well, are we all in Isaiah chapter 66? If not, you'll get there. Uh, verse 6, Isaiah 66 and verse 6. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendeth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, come on, she was delivered a man child. So before the labor pain came, he was saying it already has happened. You got to get this. See, that just pain because you're not seeing what you want to see. He said it has already happened. Look at verse eight. Who have heard of such a thing? Who have seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? It took God seven. And the Bible said a day to us is, oh, my goodness, is unmeasurable to his time with us. Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, come on, she brought forth her children. Watch this now. Shall I bring to the birth? Let me say it again. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shed the womb? Says thy God, he says, shall I bring you to the birth? Shall I cause you to come into labor and not bring forth the baby or the children? He said, that's not him. And see, sometimes when people don't see it happening, they, they want to back out. No, they wasn't in faith from the beginning. They was on a hype. You have to trust God. You know, we've been here for 24 years. I haven't seen all I want to see, but I'm still looking. I still got an outstretched neck. I mean, I'm still, I'm trusting God. I ain't going to stop trusting him. But watch this. He's been my stay. The Lord has been my stay. Had not been for the Lord on my side, what would I have done? He equipped us. He's prepared us for what he's going to do. Why would he give it to you and not finish it? He ain't that kind of God, people. He is not that kind of God. I'm kind of running out of time. I'm a little ahead of myself. Go over to Philippians chapter 1. I'm going to have to, to, to close this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> verse 6, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. Is everybody there. I'm talking about the whole house. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Being confident, verse 6, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun, come on, a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You're going to have to just simply believe it and stay with it and don't be moved by the hurdles you have to go through over, under, or around. Somebody said keep it moving. Don't let the devil distract you. You only reason he's coming after you because you moving into something and he don't want you to think that he wants you to think you ain't going nowhere. You ain't doing nothing. Say, yes, I am. Yes, I am. That's the only reason he's bothering you. Tell him to back off. Back off. This is what you're going to have to say. You got something to say. It's what comes out of your mouth is what's going to go forth. 
because God said he's going to do exactly what you spoke in his ear. Did y'all get something out of that? Amen. Give God some hand praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Faith is the way, yes, people of God. Faith is the way. Yes. And you have to stay in. He gave us no other mechanism to defeat the devil with, but by faith. Amen. Is there anybody out there who have never accepted Jesus as Lord and person to save your life to? Feel free to do so at this time by repeating this prayer after me. Dear Lord, you know my life. You know how I've lived. I ask you to forgive me. And I receive forgiveness unto myself. And I forgive all others who need forgiveness on my behalf. I believe that Jesus died. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead, and he is my new Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you went through that prayer, we would like for you to call us or text us. We have a packet of information we'd like to get out to you by dialing 601 708 305-3550-601-708-3550. We have a packet of information we'd like to get out to you to help you begin your new walk in the body of Christ. Yeah. Also, if you'd like to give, to give online, click the link in the comment section. To give via text, text GNCC, and the amount you want to give to 73256. 73256. Two, five, six, and while you are preparing your tithes and offering, we want to go ahead and bless them. Father, we thank you for every time and every offering, Lord God, that it be acceptable unto you, Father. And I pray as they have believed, Lord God, and received, Lord God, I, I command it to come for us speedily now. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. Also, today is the time that we normally do uh, communion. So if you have your sacraments with you, go ahead and prepare them. And we're going to do this in remembrance of the Lord. Amen. Yes. So if there's anybody that's here that you something in your life that you know God is not pleased with, you need to ask for forgiveness now because we do not take this lightly. God is a forgiving God. And this is a portion of his redemption power. On the day that Jesus met with his disciples, he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And he took bread for their healing because, they, Pastor, why you say bread is for healing? Because when the woman who was Greek by na Syrophoenician and Greek by nation, she came and asked him to heal her daughter. He said, it's not good to give the children's bread to dogs. And she said, yea, Lord, but even the dogs eat the bread from the master's table, the crumbs from the master's table. And he said, for that saying, go thy way, that daughter has been made whole. So it's a proven fact that bread represents healing. So he said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So this is for healing in your finances, in your body, wherever you need healing in relationship, in deliverance, wherever you need healing, this is set forth to do it. So let us take it in remembrance of him, break it and eat together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your wondrous works. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he took the cup. He said that this cup represents my blood, which was shed on Calvary's cross and sprinkled on the mercy seat for our deliverance. Back in the Old Testament, they would take a, a he goat and they would sprinkle blood, take one from another, sprinkle blood on another one and send him away. He was the scapegoat, which took away our sins. But as Jesus' blood was shed on Calvary, sprinkled on the mercy seat, this is our total deliverance. And he said, often as you do it, do it in remembrance of him. So let us take it and drink it in remembrance of him for our deliverance together. Let us drink. The Bible said, and they sang a song and they went out and I knew it was a blood song. Amen. So again, listen, do remember we're here on Wednesdays for our weekday Bible study at seven o'clock. Also, before you go today, I want to bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his counsels up on you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as we leave this place but not your presence, I commission the angels to watch over every person to keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. I pray a hedge of protection about them, and I plead the blood over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Till we meet again, God bless you and remain blessed.